So welcome to the Levy Library's drop-in mini session. This is a 30-minute Zoom session on the Nursing Reference Center Plus database. My name is Linda Pauls. I'm part of the Levy Library. I'm the medical librarian at Mount Sinai Beth Israel. And at the end, um, I'll go into chat and look at your questions. You can also email me or go on to ask a librarian for follow-up questions. Just to let you know, we are recording this session. My co-host is recording this session. So hopefully you'll be able to watch the recording. And if there's any problem with that, I can always send you the slides and even meet with you for a consult to review whatever your needs are. So we're looking at the Nursing Reference Center Plus database. Nursing Reference Center Plus is a clinical evidence summary tool, which means that it identifies the best evidence and then synthesizes that information to make a recommendation or a conclusion. If you're familiar with um, up to date, in some ways it's not too different from up to date, but it's nurse specific. Nursing Reference Center Plus is a very helpful resource for nurses. It's an easy and effective way to get information about diseases and conditions, to get answers quickly to questions. It offers care plans, evidence-based care sheets. You can watch skills videos. You can earn continuing education credits. It has excellent information on leadership and uh, management that support MAGNET and also the evidence-based information also supports MAGNET. It's a good way to strengthen your nursing skills. So Nursing Reference Center Plus, it is a product of EBSCO. EBSCO is the same publisher or vendor that creates Sanal that probably every nurse knows and has used throughout her career or in nursing school. It's made by nurses for nurses. It's evidence-based information. It has evidence-based information in its evidence-based care sheets and its quick lessons. So that's wonderful. You have evidence-based information. In a sense, they've kind of done the homework for you when, when there's evidence-based information. You know you're getting quality information and current information when a resource is evidence-based. One of the unique things about Nursing Reference Center Plus is that it lets you filter by material type. So if you only want a video, if you only want skills information, if you want an evidence-based care sheet or a quick lesson, there is a way to filter just by that material type. And I think that's one of the things that makes Nursing Reference Center Plus special. It's also updated weekly, so you'll know the information you're getting is current. Just to sort of confirm um, their process for um, getting evidence-based information, they use a robust seven-step evidence-based methodology. So they go through all these steps right here before they draw their conclusion or recommendation. The content in Nursing Reference Center Plus is evidence-based care sheets, which are care plans, uh, nursing skills, quick lessons, competency checklists. So if you wonder if you or someone who reports to you meets the competencies of a particular skill, you can find a competency checklist on Nursing Reference Center Plus. There are skills videos and images, patient handouts, those come in both English and Spanish. There are free continuing education modules. There are management and leadership topics. You can get a, the full text or a PDF. You can create a citation. So if you don't use a reference manager yet, I'll say, you can create a citation right inside Nursing Reference Center Plus for whatever the material type is that you're looking at. You can set an, a topic alert. So if you wanna know if your evidence-based care sheet has been updated, you can set an alert and get information about that. And there is also a mobile app, so you can have it at your device at the point of care. So to access Nursing Reference Center Plus, which I'm going to do in a minute when I do a demo, you're going to go on to the Levy Library, and there are two areas where you can access it. You can either click on Databases, 
where this circle is, and then in the box, type in Nursing Reference Center Plus, or just a little bit below that as you scroll down where these three columns are, under Popular Tools, you can just click on Nursing Reference Center Plus. So I'm gonna go live now into Nursing Reference Center Plus, and so I can do this with ease, and um, I'm gonna demo the database for you. So I'm just going to click on it right here. Remember I showed you, you could click on databases and type it, but I'll save myself the keystrokes and just click on it right here. So here's Nursing Reference Center Plus. Um, it's got these little landing pages here, which is another way to filter. And basically what each of the landing pages um, do is they've curated some information for you. So on the main landing page, which is where you'd want to go just to run a general search or you could even run all your searches from here on the landing page, they've curated some videos for you. You could watch a video right here on the landing page. Let me go back because it's a little bit slow. They've put up some COVID-19 information. Right here, they've given you a section to click on to watch some skills with videos and some management topics. So you can just explore those if you don't want to search on your own. But the thing I want you to remember about this landing page is that right here in the center, there is a little tour about Nursing Reference Center Plus. It's probably a little bit more simple than what I'm gonna go into today. But remember, I told you one of the things I thought that was special about Nursing Reference Center Plus was filtering for material types, filtering for skills, filtering for evidence-based care sheets, filtering for quick lessons, filtering for a video. They're going to show you in here, let me just click on it in this video. I'm not really gonna play it, I just wanna let you see that it's there. When you play it, that video, I think at about point twenty nine. Will um, it will show you how to filter for material types. But I think you'll remember that after today because it's pretty easy. So I'm just going to, without clicking on any of these um, tabs to a landing page, which also sort of serve as a filter, just in the all areas, I'm going to search for a topic. And you could search for anything here, hospital falls prevention, pick line removal, central line associated bloodstream infections, preventing medication areas, errors. It's endless what you can search for. I'm just gonna search for something pretty, um, pretty general. Type in diabetes, type two. And it's running the search for me. And here's the search right here. Here are all the search results, right? A lot of results. So what are these results? If you look below the title over on the right where there are parentheses, it's going to tell you the material type. So it's it instantly given me some quick lessons. It's also told me that this is available as a continuing education module. I can see that just by looking right here. If I were to click on this and fill out the registration, I could go on and take um, a CE. CEs are free. They are part of Mount Sinai's subscription to Nursing Reference Center Plus. So everything here tells you the type of material type it is, right? This is practice and skills, cultural competency. To filter, so if you really just wanted to start by getting an overview of type 2 diabetes, a quick lesson, over here on the left, this is probably the takeaway from today's lesson, is to know that the special thing about Nursing Reference Center Plus are the material types that they've created for you. Um, many of them are evidence-based. You can filter to the material type you want right here on the left. So I'm gonna check quick lesson and see what kind of quick lessons it offers in type two diabetes. And now it's refined my search from that huge number down to 130, and I'm sure as you move down, um, not all 130 are gonna be exactly what you want. But so here, let's get an overview for a, a quick lesson on type two diabetes. I always recommend that people start by looking at the HTML full text. 
and there are a few reasons for that. You can still get the PDF and download it, but I think the HTML is nice because you instantly see the content and you can just click and jump to something. All of the quick lessons contain the same type of content. They all start off with an etiology, then they offer facts and figures, risk factors, signs and symptoms on presentation, assessment, treatment goals, some food for thought, red flags, which are things you need to be mindful of, and what do I need to tell the patient or the patient's family. So let's just scroll down, right? You could see all the content here. Red flags are things like obstructive sleep apnea in patients with type 2 diabetes is associated with poor glucose control. So as you read through this, all the citations, just like in any paper, will have little numbers after them in the reference. And you could go down here and identify the reference for what you're looking at. And because it's evidence-based, all the references have some letters after, after them. You can go down to the matrix and see what type of study that was in the matrix. So if it was an M, it was a meta-analysis, an SR, it's a systematic review, an RCT, a randomized control trial. And hopefully this has just triggered in your memory that this matrix is looking very similar to the evidence-based pyramid. And it is for the most part. So that's a quick lesson. Let's go back. Linda, you have a question. Uh, do you know if the CEUs can be counted for medical surgical certification? I don't know that, and you should check with you. I've gotten these questions before. I think you should check with your department or your supervisor, and what I was told actually by EBSCO, especially for nurse practitioners, is that you should check with the state that they are free CEs, and I've had nurses ask about them and be pretty happy with them. I don't know what they use them for. So I would just, I would just check with your specialty or your department. I hope that offers some kind of answer to your question. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna filter here again on the left for an evidence-based care sheet. And I see there are many on type 2 diabetes for screening and asymptomatic patients to weight management. But let's look at prevention. And again, I'm going to go to the HTML. All the evidence-based care sheets contain these two things, what we know about the disease or condition and what we can do. So what we know is what exactly it's information on the disease or the condition and what we can do is the best way to treat a patient or the best way to manage a situation. And again, all the citations, because it's evidence-based, have a letter that you can look up in the matrix for the type of study it is. I want to show you on the right right here some of the things some of the tools available in Nursing Reference Center Plus and some of the things that you can do. So if you have a, if you're using a reference manager, you can click right here and export into your reference manager by just picking the type of reference manager you have. I think this probably kicked me out of the sheet, but I'm going right back in. Or if you don't have a reference manager, there are two ways that you can create a citation. And I'm sure this is um, very helpful to people who aren't using a reference manager. You can e either email yourself the citation or you can go into save. I'm gonna go into save just to show you what it does. I'm gonna click on over here, citation format. See where I clicked? Then I'm gonna drop it down to APA style or whatever style you're using. Hopefully it's offered here. And it has just that quickly created the reference for me. Imagine that when you were in nursing school if you didn't use a reference manager. Um, I would also add the date because this is an electronic resource and it does update when there are new updates. Another really nice thing besides it creating the reference which you can copy and paste into your paper or policy is that it creates a permalink. 
a permalink and a permalink is a permanent link. The URL above will no longer be active when we leave this session today. The permalink right here is something that you can copy and paste into a policy or a paper and your colleagues at Mount Sinai can literally click on the permalink and go right back into that paper and read it. So if they wonder why did she cite this paper, they can come right here and read it. And then to set up an alert, if this is a project you're working on and you want to make sure that if anything changes, if there's new information, you are on top of it, you would just put your email here, pick how often you want to receive the alert and create the alert. So now, Bi-weekly, I will get information when there's news on this topic on diabetes prevention. So let's go back. Patient handouts is right down here on the left. So if I unclick the evidence-based care sheets, I can get some patient handouts. Patient handouts have to be emailed so here, let's look at this one. If you wanted to send your patient um, some patient information, see where it says right here, patient education. I did on the left filter it, but it's letting me know that the material type here. I would click on the HTML. And then you could either print it or email it. They do not offer a PDF for patient information. You have to either print it or email it to yourself and then give it to the patient. I'm going to click on skills just to see what kind of skills might show up for diabetes type two. It's like, what, what would the skills be for you as a nurse for um, diabetes type two? And I see some interesting ones right here. Let's look at number three, patient and family education, teaching the patient with diabetes type two. So, and again, it tells you right there that that's nursing practice and skill. You could also do a, a CE module. It tells you that you would just click on there. Linda, we actually have a follow-up question. Yes, go ahead. You brought up the CEs. Mm -hmm. um, so she said, or sorry, he or she said, are all the CEUs from EBSCO? Uh, and this is important to know when asking an accrediting body. I think so. And again, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know a lot of that information, but I believe since Nursing Reference Center Plus is an EBSCO product that the CEs are from EBSCO. Um, I guess you could go into a module and just see what kind of information it gives you. I'm sorry, I do get a lot of questions about CEs and I don't know. I can try to. Um, if you email me after the session, I will email my contact and see what uh, at EBSCO the Nursing Reference Center Plus rep that I've dealt with in the past and see if she knows. My guess is, since it's an EBSCO product, that they are from EBSCO, but you don't quote me on that. So I came into, this is a skills video, a skills, sorry, skills material type on patient and family education. And some nice things about it is right inside it, Right. So if you're wondering, what do I need to know to teach my patients about type 2 diabetes? It has right inside it links to competency checklists. So you can click on that for yourself or if you supervise someone and it's giving you um, prerequisite skills, preparation, the procedure. It has two options. One of them they call interactive. And I believe the interactive one is just, just has like a, a field where you can check if the person or yourself are meeting the criteria. So again, I like the HTML because I can see what the content is. Why is the patient and family education, why is this patient and family education for the patient with type 2 diabetes important? What are what you need to know before performing patient and family education for the patient with type 2 diabetes. So it's breaking it down to, for you in sections. And again, all of that, all the skills, material types will have those same sections. The same tools are available for you to create a citation or an alert. 
Um, there's also a way to refine it just to drugs. So it's probably just gonna pull up a bunch of diabetes drugs. Many of them might be chapters in books. I'm gonna go back now for the sake of time to the landing page and talk about some of these other pages here. If you only wanted patient information over here where it says more, you could drop it down to patient information and type in in diabetic foot ulcer and it's just going to give you patient information and as you could see right there it's also available available in Spanish if you only wanted to search for continuing education you could just click on continuing it continuing education and limit your search to whatever topic you wanted to do, to do a CE module on, just by clicking on that and registering, you can move forward and take the CE module. I'm gonna go into skills so we can look at a video. So that didn't seem like there were any vid videos available for the diabetes type two, so I'm gonna type in nasal gastric tube. And again, I'm in the skills. I've limited it to skills. And I see right here, a whole bunch of things have come up for nasal gastric tube. If I only wanted to look at videos, I could go on the left here and just click video and watch just a bunch of skills videos. This one is on taping a nasal gastric tube to the patient's nose. We're not gonna watch it, I just wanna... Okay, they're that, that simple to access. I'm gonna uncheck it because I'm wondering if any of the skills sheets, any of the, pay, of the nursing practice and skills material will also contain videos. So by clicking skills and looking over here on the right, remember in the parentheses, it tells you that the material type this is, I can see that this contains an image and it contains a video. So let's take a look at that. Administration of medication through a nasogastric tube. You can also listen to it if you didn't wanna read it. I see it's broken down here and you have to be in the HTML to, to look at this. Um, I see it's broken down in different areas. What you need to know before administering medication by a nasogastric tube. And it's got lots of images, lots of images. Images and steps and explanations. Some stuff highlighted in red. If I keep scrolling down, it's got a couple of videos that you can watch. And you can also print it as a PDF or download it as a PDF, but if you do that, obviously you're not gonna be able to watch the videos. So there are about four minutes left. Let me go into management. So management is also um, very useful. It's good for magnet, it's good for leadership. What if you want some information on shared governance? If, or if you wonder if you what the skills are to perform a performance appraisal. So I clicked on management, and again, these pages have curated things for you that you might want to look at if you're interested in um, skills or drugs or management to see what they've curated for you. So I'm gonna type in performance. Did I spell this correctly? Performance appraisal. And it's given me a list right here. So let me click on skills. Conducting employee appraisal, employee performance appraisal conducting. And I could see right there that it's also given me a competency checklist on how to perform the steps to perform an employee appraisal. So that could be really useful. And then it's broken it down again. What is the desired outcome? Why, why is conduct, 
conducting employee appraisal important. It's broken it down into different sections for you. And you still have the same tools here on the right to um, create a citation, to create an alert, to get a permalink. All those are there for you. I can also get an evidence-based care sheet. Right, so maybe you, why would you want an evidence-based care sheet on this? Because evidence-based care sheets always review what we know and what we can do. So if you think that information might be helpful to you for a performance appraisal or some matter on shared governance, you might want to get a, a, a evidence-based, evidence-based care sheet, right? Evidence-based. It's already done a lot of the homework for you. So we're getting near the end right now. There's about a minute left. Does anybody have any additional questions? Just trying to get back to my PowerPoint. Any questions from anyone? I have a question. Is there any yes. way to um, like create a login and kind of save materials? And like, Yes, there is. For, for the sake of time, I didn't go through that. But there's a sign in here, right here. I was signed in before. And you can put things into a folder and save your search. I always tell people, do a rehearsal. You know, just put a few citations in the folder and send it to yourself just to make sure you know how to do it right. I don't get that question very often. But there is a login. You, can, you, have, you set up an account, you register for an account. I'll also show you where the app is. The app, you can go to the Levy Library's mobile app page to download the app, but it's also, um, it's also at the very bottom of the landing page. And you would click on that, uh, start the registration. Oh, see, it, expi it expired my session. Um, but yes, there is. To answer your question, there's a sign in here and you could start to put things in a, in a folder. Um, any other questions? I just want to get back to my PowerPoint. So back to my PowerPoint. I've already taken questions. You can email me or go into Ask a Librarian. And just to let you know, to go to, go to the Levy Library's calendar, under classes and events to see what other 30 minute drop in Zoom sessions we're offering. There'll be a whole uh, new list next month. I'll continue throughout the summer. And there are, it looks like there are three more remaining for uh, May. So thank you everybody for attending and feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. Thank you.